Nine. If only we knew when. Mam was sitting with her leg in plaster. Kath and Spuggy were sitting by her. Plod was keeping out of the way. Dad had gone to the police, and Spuggy was afraid they would lock him up. But just then he walked in. What did the police say, Dad? cried Spuggy. Dad smiled. They said, thanks. A few days later, the police still hadn't locked up Baz and Victor. Spuggy couldn't understand why. Dad was fed up with telling him. Look, he said, the police want to catch them red handed. But I divin know what day the raid's planned for. And the police canna watch the recreation centre for ever. They've got too much else to do. And Dad went off with Kath on a last training jog. Tomorrow was the day of the Great North Run. Kath was first up next morning. The run was time to start at ten thirty, so she and Dad. Had to eat their breakfast early. Are you coming to watch? Kath asked Spuggy. Maybe it's later on, said Spuggy. I've got to see to the pigeons first. And off he went to the allotment. It's always the pigeons first, said Kath. So it should be, grinned Dad. Mam gave them both a kiss. And wished them good luck. After they had all left, Mickey Stone arrived at the front door. He had come to interview Mam for his show. I hope you don't mind, he said. It's a real hard luck story. Mam didn't mind at all. Only I was just a way out, she said. I canna sit still here. I was going to take the radio and listen to the run down the allotment. So Mickey gave her a lift. <whistles> On the allotment, Spuggy was telling Janey what Dad had said about the police and the raid on the recreation centre. If only we knew when, he sighed. Janie had to go to her dad's ship with some shopping. The ship was leaving today. As she left, Spuggy saw a car coming. It was Mickey Stone, Mam, and Plod. You must be the only two people in Newcastle who aren't going to the run," said Mickey. "You should see the crowds. The police have got a hard day today." Then he turned to Spuggy. I've just found out what was on your mind the other day, he said. You did right to speak to your dad. Then Mickey looked up at the pigeons as they exercised. Any news of Blue Flash? he asked. Spuggy shook his head. He was trying not to think about that any more. Down at the river, Janie had gone on to the ship and given her dad his shopping. But as she was leaving, she saw Baz and Victor. Victor was wearing a tracksuit and carrying some luggage. Baz was carrying a pigeon basket. The two men came onto the ship. Janie quickly moved out of sight. She followed them down below, and along a passage to Baz's cabin. She could hear Baz talking to Victor. "You can look after the rest while I'm away," he said. "This one's special." Baz and Victor put the luggage and the pigeon basket in the cabin, 
and came out again. Right, said Baz. I'll see you in an hour at the metro exit. Have a good time at the centre. And the two men laughed and started to walk down the passage. Janie followed. Then Baz stopped and turned. Janie had to dodge into Baz's cabin. Better lock the door, smiled Baz. <laughs> Maybe there's burglars about. Janie found herself locked in, and the raid was on. Thank you.